Steeler fans, welcome to another call sheet breakdown. This is Kevin Smith with you, picking up where we left off last week. Last week, we looked at the uh, run game of Steelers' new offense coordinator, Arthur Smith. And today, we're going to look at his passing game. And honestly, I, I've, I've been thinking about the best way to do this. There's really so much volume that you have to digest when you're thinking about something as broad as a passing game. We can look at his, his play action game, his boot game what he does from the pocket, et cetera. But I think the best way to break it down is to look at what Arthur Smith does conceptually. What is he trying to do with his past schemes, with his designs, and how is he trying to help the quarterback by structuring a system that is quarterback-friendly and fairly easy to read? And one of the best ways he does that is with the use of triangular reads in the passing game. And so that's really where our focus is going to be today, Arthur Smith and his use of triangular reads. All right, so what are triangular reads, you might ask? I mean, honestly, it's it's pretty much what it sounds like. It's it's the creation of a triangle in the route scheme that will allow the quarterback to either A, isolate a defender. Uh, I shouldn't say either. Both isolate a defender and then also keep uh, his eyes in the same part of the field so that he doesn't have to move his head much while he's going through his progression. One of the things that makes things difficult on a quarterback is if you ask him to have his primary read on one part of the field, his secondary read on another part of the field, he's got to reorient himself as he moves his eyes across the field. And that's something I thought that the Steelers struggled with with Kenny Pickett over the first two years, simplifying his reads. So let's look at one way that Smith does it. And, and he does it, again, with the simple creation of a triangle in the route. So you're going to look at the three receivers to the bottom of the screen here. We're going to get a deep corner route to, to attack the back of the end zone by the point man in this bunch. The outside receiver is going to run a bit of a speed out here, and the inside receiver is just going to kind of hitch up right here. And what you'll notice in, in this design is that we've got, it'll look a little bit more, uh, a little bit more like a real triangle when we, when we see it on film, but you've got the creation of a triangle that allows the quarterback really to keep his eyes in one area of the field and to move from read to read with some some suddenness and and a lack of clutter. And remember, we say it all the time: you know, slow mind equals equals slow feet. Are and, and the more your mind is cluttered, the less you react well. So let's take a look real quick at, at how this plays out. You're going to watch Taylor Heineke now. He's going to get his read. And he's going to drop this ball beautifully to the corner of the end zone. That's Kyle Pitts' very talented tight end in Atlanta. Uh, one more time again, man. Let's let's look real quick at the creation of the triangle that we're talking about. Okay, look at the spacing of the routes here. You can see, right, as Pitts takes this a little bit deeper and that route develops outside, the creation of that triangle right there. That's really what Taylor Heineke is focusing on. Now, I would be lying if I told you exactly what his read is here. Right. I mean, I hear a lot of guys doing breakdowns telling you, oh, you know, they read this, this and this. And, you know, I'm not criticizing those guys, but I don't think any of us really know exactly what the read progression is or the key defender, uh, because we're not in the film. We're not in the in the meeting rooms. We're not there on the practice field. We don't know if I had to make a guess. I would guess that we're reading off the safety here because it's one high and that Heineke wants to make sure if it's one high. Right. That he attacks. He, he throws his deep ball. And that if it's too high, he checks it down right here. And so he's going to get one high, and he'll throw this thing aggressively to the corner, puts it right on the money, touchdown to Kyle Pitts. Again, one more time through. Watch Heineke's head here. Watch how his head is able to just stay in the same spot. He doesn't have to reorient his feet. He keeps his platform square, and he can deliver a good ball, knowing that all his reads are right in front of him. All right, here's another one. Let's see how Atlanta gets to the triangle on this one, they're going to do this off of play action. A little bit of different uh, concept here as to how they get there. Now you're going to take Pitts, who's lined up as an inline tight end, and you're going to run him on a wheel route up the sideline. Right? You're going to get your, your wide receiver here to attack the middle of the field, and the running back off the play fake is now going to work out here to the flat, and now we're going to create the triangle just like this. We're going to have that look. Heineke off of his, off of his drop. You're going to see him take a nice drop right here. And then off the play fake, he'll get his eyes in the middle of the field, reading that safety right there. And he wants to see the movement of that safety for where to go with the football. Play fake, eyes to the middle of the field. He winds up throwing that thing to his, his wide out. My guess on this play is that the wide out's got 
uh, a, a, a read recognition where he's looking at the safety and he needs to know, is this middle of the field open or middle of the field closed? And by that, if the safety's in the, sitting in the middle like that, he's going to read that as middle of the field closed and he's going to just sit down with his route like he does here, right? He's going to sit down there. If the safety were to be moving out in this fashion and the safety breaking in that, in that fashion, he would wind up taking this to the post and splitting the safeties. That's called middle of the field open. So it's an option route and he sits it down right here. And there's the throw for the first down. All right, nice ball there delivered by Heineke. But again, why, let's look at the triangle that they create here, right? Really nicely done. You can see it develop right there. And again, what, is, what does this do for Taylor Heineke, right? As you'll see Pitts get a little further up the field here. And we create the triangle right there. It allows Heineke to keep his eyes largely in the same place his head largely in the same place if he doesn't like this he's going to throw the ball right here right to, again to his wide receiver if he doesn't like it all he's got to do is move his eyes out here to pits or move you know slightly reorient his feet to drop the ball down to his running back swinging out but it's not it's not one of these things where he's got to come all the way back across the field right just to reorient himself and find his secondary read so again, the triangle helps a quarterback really, really speed himself up as he moves from, through his progression. Here's another one. Man, this is a thing of beauty. Little play action pass on the goal line. They're going to motion the tight end, Kyle Pitts, across, and then off a play fake to the running back, really attack down the middle of the field, man, creating the triangle now in the middle of the field. Play action, attacking the middle of the field. These are all things that Steeler fans should be excited about, things that we haven't seen. We talked about simplifying the quarterback's reads, how, how you get that in the triangle read concept. I mean, look at that. That's a, that's a beautiful thing, man. That ball's a little bit on the backside shoulder. You'd, you'd like to see the QB get that out there in front of him a little bit more. But again, man, uh, watch the reaction of the linebackers to the play fake here, how aggressively they all jump up. Look at, look at the bind the linebackers are already in. I mean, you got your backers you know, here and here and here. They've all jumped up. Meanwhile, this is Pitts right behind him, right sneaking behind them as he's going to get to the middle of the field on his route. Heineke, pretty easy, gets to step in right there now and dump that ball down right over the middle. He's got a nice, he's got a nice window right here to, to throw the football into. But again, we're talking about creating the triangle, right? Here it is right here, right? Look at this triangle. What does the triangle do? It gives, it gives his quarterback three options with his, his head and eyes and feet all oriented in the same position, right, on the same platform. He doesn't have to reorient. And again, speeding up the quarterback. It allows the quarterback to speed up. And if there's one thing that we've wanted to see in Pittsburgh with Kenny Pickett, it's for him to process faster. Well, you know, sometimes that's not on the quarterback. I'm not absolving Kenny Pickett, but, but there are times when you look at the Pittsburgh passing game over the last two years, where they have not been very quarterback friendly, not given the quarterback simple reads like this, and we're and we're seeing a lot of it from the Arthur Smith offense. Here's a little bootleg action for you. This is coming against man coverage. Boy, I really like this design. This is a nice little play design, especially against man. When you're going to get your 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 triangle formed with a deep out here from your from your outside receiver, you're going to get a long intermediate cross there running away from coverage there on the backside. And then this fullback right here, you'll, you'll see he won't get out into the route. He winds up chopping down the edge player. He's probably taught if the edge player, this edge player is going to come aggressively, and he's probably being taught if the edge player is going to threaten the QB on the boot, block him and chop him down. If not, you get out into the route. And, and so you're, you're really going to ideally get that third route in the triangle coming there from that Full back into the flat. Again, here's your triangle being created. Against man coverage, though, the, the notion of the triangle is less important so much. But the thing that's more important is making sure that, that you run away from man coverage. And right here, you're going to get this matchup, right? And that's what they're going to run away from as they send pits all the way across the field. And he's going to wind up making the catch. Full back gets set. Here comes the boot action, right? This is Desmond Ritter at quarterback now. Pitts working across the field. Right, hits him with a strike. All right, that's easy pickings, man. I mean, again, you get man coverage like this, run away from the coverage, right? Crossers are tough to cover man to man. Use the athleticism of a quarterback to move the pocket, right? That's good stuff. Falcons versus Saints now in this one. This might be my favorite clip on here. Watch the spacing of this route. 
First of all, play action. Again, something Steelers fans have been clamoring for, more play action. Well, here's a nice play action concept. Let's run it through real quick. Play action fake, and we'll see the triangle develop. And a beautiful strike there. Again, attacking the middle of the field. Watch the route by the outside receiver. Tell me you can't see George Pickens running this route. In cut, hit Pickens in stride. You know, maybe with Pickens' speed, he takes that thing to the house. But again, look at the look at the routes. Look at the triangle develop, man. I'll let it go a little further. Look at this beautiful, beautiful spacing. This is why I really love this route right here. This this thing is spaced so well between these three receivers. And you've now created a bind for the defense. That you you've got them now moving uh, in various directions. You got one route attacking the flat right here. You got a crosser here, right? and then you've got that in, intermediate dig. That that really creates big windows that the defense has to has to defend. But it's not confusing for the quarterback. Again, man, you look at Ritter's field of vision here, right? And and all he's really looking at is there to there. He can see all three of his receivers in that same line of vision. He doesn't have to reorient his feet. He doesn't have to move his head. Again, quarterback friendly. This is a quarterback friendly passing game. And that's probably the thing I'm the most excited about is how the structure of it benefits the quarterback. All right, one more for you. Watch the creativity of this play. I really like this design. What are the Falcons doing, man? They're finding different ways to get to similar concepts. So this is Bijan Robinson split wide. He's going to come in motion, and then he's going to work back and then into the middle of the field. You're going to get a whip route out here, and then you're going to get the fullback into the flat right there. Again, now, right, here's your triangle. But again, what are they doing, right? They're constantly creating these, these well-spaced routes that allow the quarterback well, this is another one off of play action where, where he's going to fake and now get set. And again, look what his field of vision is going to be. Okay, His field of vision is going to be right here. Right here. Not very complicated. Complicated drawing. I got a lot of lines on the field right there. But again, all of his routes are going to generally be in this sort of area, right? Where he can sight them all without having to really relocate his feet and his eyes. Very, very user-friendly. And again, a creative design to get to the same concept that we've been looking at over and over, but just from a very, very different look. That one, he checks down in the flat to his fullback. Man, I, I would have loved to have seen Desmond Ritter just slide up in the pocket a step, right? When he hits his break right there, slide up, rather than come off the read to Robinson, because he's looking for Robinson on the crosser initially. Rather than, rather than come off of that and dump it down into the flat, I'd love to see him just right here, man. All right, it, it's, it's, it obviously looks covered, right? It obviously looks covered, and this is the, the kind of stuff that you, you, you know, you got to get young quarterbacks to. He's got three guys around, around B. John Robinson. He certainly looks covered, but watch what's going to happen if he just stays with it. It's got, he's got a big pocket. He's getting a little bit of pressure right here. I mean, if you're, if you're Ritter, you just slide up in the pocket just a hair and you let Robinson come through. You'll see they got an opportunity now, maybe to hit something for a big one. All right. But again, you know, nothing wrong with that. He checks it down and they, and they make a nice little gain on a really well designed play. So what are we seeing in the Smith passing game? We're seeing a user friendly scheme that simplifies things for the quarterback, stresses defenses by spacing the field. And of course, that, that leads you to the question of, well, why, why wasn't it better? Why wasn't the passing game better in some of the places he's been? Well, obviously, as we pointed out in the last film room, he's a, he's a run first guy. Uh, and he wants to run the ball. But uh, he did have a, a decent amount of success. I mean, look at the DVO rankings on the screen in front of you. I mean, DVOA, I think, is one of the best statistics out there. I'm not going to take time to explain it now. Uh, but it really, it, it measures your play-by-play -play performance against the rest of the league. And it takes in factors like competition and field conditions and uh, the, the, the score at the time. Really, really interesting way of looking at stats. Uh, and you look at, at, at where Arthur Smith's offenses have been back in Tennessee 2019-2020, top 10 DVOA. Eighth in the league in 2022 in Atlanta in DVOA. And he had those two years in 2021 and 2023 where it wasn't very good. It obviously hasn't been very good in Pittsburgh. So can Arthur Smith with a, a, a user-friendly passing scheme get Kenny Pickett to where he needs to be? Didn't really work out with Desmond Ritter. Maybe that's more of an indictment of Desmond Ritter than it is of Arthur Smith. Either way, we're going to find out. I'm excited. I got to tell you, Steelers fans, I was a little hesitant. When they first signed uh, Smith because of his failure to, to bring Ritter along. But the more I watch his scheme, the more I think it's beneficial to quarterbacks. All right, that's our, that's our breakdown of Arthur Smith's passing game. We'll be back with more about him and all, of Steel, all the Steelers stuff throughout the offseason. Take care, everybody.